Thanks for being here, and my name is Wen Mao Liu from NSFocus. For those who don't know NSFocus, it's a security service provider of anti-DDoS, threat intelligence offering, etc. We have office in Santa Clara, and my personal research interests cover uh, IoT security, cloud security, and AI security. Today, I'd like to talk about research on new vectors of UTB-based DDoS amplification attacks of IoT. So here's my agenda. Uh, first, I'll introduce a background of IoT-based DDoS amplification attacks, and then analyze the reason why IoT protocols are vulnerable. Then I'll show IoT devices with these protocols exposed to the internet are at risk. Next, I'll give monetary results of these threats against these IoT devices. Finally, I'll give some suggestions to IoT vendors and enterprise CISOs. So what we have been seeing lately is that IoT-based DDoS attack are emerging. So the first reason is that IT, IoT, and OT technologies are converging. For example, SD1 and VPN are connecting home routers with enterprise networks. In the enterprise network itself, there are printers, cameras, and SQL systems. The number of IoT devices are increasing rapidly and they are interconnecting with each other. The more assets, the more risk. And the second reason is that many of the IoT devices are poorly designed. From the figure on the left, we can see that from the year 2002 to 2020, more than 10% of the CVEs are uh, well, IoT related each year. And from the figure on the right, we can see that most of these vulnerabilities are easy to exploit and more than half of their impacts are critical and high. I would say IoT is a traitor for the attackers. As a result, in the year of 2016, millions of routers, cameras were compromised and they started a record high one plus GBPS DDoS attack against a bunch of famous websites. Most of, uh, many of which were taken down. The botnet is now known as Mirai and is still active now. After that, we did a full scan and found that tens of millions of IoT devices are exposed to the internet. Obviously, the threat and the risk are both real. We found that attackers like to use UDP DDoS so they can spoof the source IP addresses and they prefer bandwidth efficient ways, especially UDP reflection DDoS. We use a concept of BOF, which was defined by a paper in NDSS 2014 to measure the reflection efficiency. Here is a list of UDP based vulnerable, vulnerable protocol and their BAFs given by NIST. For example, the BAF of NTP amplification attack is 556.9 which means it can produce malicious traffic that is more than 500 times larger than the requested traffic. So far, the list is increasing fast and many of new items are not implemented by NIST and most of them are IoT protocols and their vulnerabilities are disclosed very recently um, from 2017 to 2020. So we have to be aware of these new attack vectors once a IoT protocol is found to be vulnerable. The attacker will build an exploit, weaponize it, and start to attack immediately. In our IoT security annual report, the interval between the time when an exploit is disclosed and the time when a real attack is captured may be less than one day or two days. As a user, we have been reading news such as NetScout said that COP attack is out in the wild. Raptor 7 says that Ubiquiti protocols is being abused. Trend Macro said that abuse of WS discovery protocol can lead to large scale of DDoS attacks. And we in the focus have our own report talking about something you should know about OpenVPN reflection attacks and mention many devices with ADDP services are vulnerable to Ripple 20 threats. So what are these protocols and why are they being abused? Let's take a deep look. First, let's look at WS Discovery. It's a UDP-based unicast protocol for web service 
discovery, it works as follows. The client sends a UDP problem message to search services and then wait for the reply. How is it being abused? In the worst case, attacker send a mail form 35 request with a payload 3 aa 3CAA3E uh, -E, with a spoofed source address, and the service will reply a 1590 byte response. You can see here we capture uh, three bytes and the 1550 bytes. So it's abused because a short request can trigger a much, much longer res response. Even worse, in our test, we send a packet to the victim and receive two packets later. Uh, due to retransmission. Here we can see two responses. To calculate the BIF, we send, we send a payload to all services exposed with the real source address so that we can get the responses. In our test, the length of the request we send is three bytes and the average length of the response we receive is 1330. So the BIF would be 443. Keep in mind that the BIF is determined by specific request and its corresponding response. Even we send the same request, different server will return the uh, responses of different length, so the BIF might be different. In March 2020, Tencent published an article about BV DVR being abused for a reflection attacks, which we named DH Discover, as there was DS DH discovery shown in the proper message. And we search a text at DH discover dot search in the alien bot and find five meshes. Um, we search the file IOC in from alien bot and the virus total. The first example was first seen uh, at uh, December 2019 and it's still active now. And the rest example are for, was the first seen in 2020. So DH discover reflection attack is very new uh, to us. Since DH Discover support UDP and Unicast, how it is abused is quite straightforward. Look at the figure. Uh, it shows a response, including MAC address, IP address, etc. Intense in the report, length of the request is 62 bytes. In our test, after sending this payload, average response length we received is uh, 705.3. So the BF is 11.4. We, also, we have also captured some four um, byte requests for, from our honey ports. We send the request to expose DH discover services, and the average response length is 740.1. So the BF is uh, 178.5. ADDP, short for Advanced Device Discovery Protocol is a UDP-based protocol developed by Digi International that allows devices on a local network to be found regardless of their network configuration. It's a UDP-based multicast protocol doing broadcast on 224.0.5.128 uh, on port 1362. The figure on the top right shows a sample request and the text below shows the response. Um, it seems to work fine since it's a multicast protocol, but the real problem is that it also supports unicast and does not verify the source address. So it's well designed, but poorly implemented. In our test, the length of the request we send is 14 bytes, and the average length of the response we received is 141.7, so the BF is 10.1. Before the year of 2019, most of VPN-related DDoS attacks are DDoS against the VPN devices. If we search a keyword, OpenVPN and DDoS, the top query results um, in 2018 from Google is DDoS attack OpenVPN on PFSense, given by Google uh, first figure, uh, as we see in the first, first figure. figure. The top query in 2019 is how to protect your VPN lesson from a DDoS attack test. After that, things has changed. VPN protocol, especially OpenVPN, are being abused. The top query in 2020 is what you should know about OpenVPN reflection attacks, which is written by us. OpenVPN is a popular um, application layer VPN implementation based on open 
SSL library, it works as follows. After receiving a 14-byte request, OpenVPN service will send a 26-byte message. So the length of the request and the response are comparable. The BF is less than two, which, which means fine. In fact, the first OpenVPN amplification attack was seen by Huawei anti-DDoS in 2019. So why is the OpenVPN being abused? The real problem is UDP protocol is unreliable. Trans retransmission is controlled by applications. So how OpenVPN handle it was allowed. After the OpenVPN server send the first response, it will send a 14 byte response in two, four, eight, 16 seconds or every 1.5 seconds if no SEK is received according to its configuration, which means that it BF would, will be very high. Of course, no ACK will be rec is received because the source address is moved by the attacker. Here is a demo, and we can see that the server sends four responses in 30 seconds. And when the length of the request we send is 14 bytes, uh, the average length of the response we received is uh, 24, 26 plus 14 plus 14 plus 14 and plus 14. So the BF is 5.9. In some cases, the attacker send a, a two byte request, which is captured in by our, our honeypot. The responses are 26 byte long in average. So the BF is 13. Code, short for constrained application protocol, is a UDP based web transfer protocol for use with constrained node and constrained network in the Internet of Things. Uh, the core protocol was not mainstreamed back, um, back in 2017, but the number of visible core endpoints has increased rapidly uh, from 2017 uh, to 2018. When the attacker sent a 21-byte request, Netscout said that average response length is 720 bytes, but in our test, we receive response of this of 222 bytes in average. So the BIF is 10.6. In some cases, corporate server return 516 byte responses. So the BIF is 24.6. Ubiquity is also a, a dis device discovery protocol designed by Ubiquity Network. Uh, the vulnerability is quite straight, um, is similar to previous uh, protocols. Uh, so the BIF of Ubiquity protocol is 35. So we can conclude that the reason why this protocol can be abused uh, is number one, they are UDP based. Number two, they support unicast and they do not verify the source addresses. Number three, the length of the responses is much, much longer than the length of request. Furthermore, the reason why they are risky is not only because they are vulnerable, but also because they are exposed to the attackers. We are seeing more and more new IoT devices on the internet. The number of these devices is increasing day by day. What does that mean? Actually, we have been scanning virus of, of IoT devices on the internet round after round constantly as shown in the figure. All of the top three types have more than 60,000 exposed IoT services. The number keeps increasing as more IoT devices are connected to the internet. We, the security team, can see these through assets. So can the attackers. They, can, they are discovering these IoT assets by scanners, botnets, and whatever they can use. After finding vulnerable assets, they can just launch the amplification attack we mentioned previously. Here's a ch no challenge to WS discovery DDoS mitigation. OpenVF, um, short for Open Network Video Interface Forum, is an open standard for IP-based security surveillance products. In order to um, interact with other devices, a device, new, a device discovery mechanism, which is based on WS discovery. Um, in, Many vendors are following the OMVF standard, but uh, their implementation may be different. A10 networks found that about 46% of source support of WS discovery DDoS are 3702, but the rest are not fixed. And we observed that uh, 
24% of WS discovery service sent a response with non 3702 source ports and 4.4 of WH discoveries uh, this devices send the responses with random source ports, which raised a new challenge to DDoS mitigation because we cannot apply a fixed a, a rule with fixed source ports, and this is common among all types of OVF devices. PH Discover protocol also needs attention because it's widely deployed as we see in the table. Moreover, it has a lot of OEMs. It's used about, um, by many vendors in the figure on the left and many types of devices in the figure on the right. Once its vulnerability is disclosed, many vendors will be affected and the security patch will be very challenging for these vendors. Even worse, exposed ADDP service will help attacker to find the devices affected by Ripple 20. ADDP is used by many digital devices, as shown in the figure on the right. And uh, so the attacker may first find all these exposed um, ADDP services, which are very likely to be affected by Ripple 20 vulnerability. And they, they exploit and launch attacks. For those who don't know Ripple 20, it's a serial of um, zero day vulnerability that affected um, hundreds of millions of devices. Many vendors in the list on the right are being affected. The supply chain is not reliable. As a security team, we are monitoring these threats with our threat in capture system. We collected data from our cloud mitigation and managed IT NIDOS system and analyzed data and generated threat intelligence. LC from our threat intelligence center showed that in the year of 2020, 22% of DDoS attacks are caused by IoT devices, up from 12% in 2019. In the year of 2020, 14% of reflection sources in DDoS attack are IoT devices, up from 5 point in 2019. Among all these new types of IoT reflection attacks, WS discovery reflection is the most popular vector here, the green curve here, and the second the highest is COPE reflection attack. The third highest is DH discover reflection attack, and the ubiquity uh, is not quite stable. The first reason why WS discovery is so popular is that it, it has high BAF, as we met mentioned before. And the second reason is that attacker prefer short payload so that they can save network bandwidth. We capture many DDoS requests every day with our honeypots, and the request payload are diverse. The figure below shows the percentage of payload length of each type of attack. In WS, Dis uh, WS discovery attack, the most used payload is three, four, five bytes. And in ubiquity, uh, it's uh, four bytes in DH discover, four bytes, and in OpenVPN, two bytes. But it's different in the COPE case. Uh, the, the most used payload is 21 bytes. Um, they are still one and five bytes. And we send these short bytes um, to the exposed service, but we have uh, not so, uh, received many responses. So maybe the two might not be the attacker's favorite. Compare, in the, compare the request length in the table, WS, Discovery has the shortest request, three bytes. So we capture tens of millions of requests on a daily basis in a single honeypot. The attacker do prefer short payload, and we receive millions of cope of requests, hundreds of thousands of ubiquity DH discovery requests every day, but no open VPN or ADDP reflection attack have been captured yet. Nevertheless, we do capture nearly about uh, 5,000 recon from um, June 1st through July 21st, 2020. The top two sizes are two and 14 bytes, as shown in the figure on the right. Here is how we distinguish between a recon and a real DDoS attack. The key is the frequency. Uh, in an OpenVPN attack, we receive a bunch of requests uh, in a short time, while recon only contain one or two requests. Accordingly, we have to update our mitigation policy either by 
adding rules based on protocol type source port and the packet length or using a cloud mitigation way. IoT devices are definitely victims, but they can also be threats. The real attacker can use them as a botnet and launch a DDoS attack for some benefits. Um, we don't know what exactly what they want, maybe extorting some companies by taking their service down or hiding APT attacks in a, a large amount of traffic. But at least we can find who they attack. We collect the victim IP from IoT honeypots. Um, after calculating the general location of their targeted IP addresses, we can see that the United States suffer most from amplified uh, reflecting DDoS. WS discovered US 47% ubiquity, US 50%, COPE US 53%, and DH discovered US 50%. We know that there are business models of cyber criminals, for example, ransomware as a service, and also DDoS as a service. Someone can rent a one hour DDoS for just $10 on the dark web, consider it's a um, large quantity of business and the IT industrial US are the biggest target of the cyber criminals and the IoT devices become their weapons. So, what can we learn from the presentation? To whom the who concerning IoT threats? We have discussed just a, a few IoT protocols in the slides. Uh, there are many similar devices or um, services discovery protocol can be abused by attackers. Uh, it's expected that more vulnerabilities of IoT protocol and uh, IoT devices will be disclosed in the coming few years. And many new uh, and new vectors of DDoS amplification attacks of IoT will be the norm. The data from NS Focus Threat Capture System show that attackers are taking full advantage of uh, WS discovery. Ubiquity is not so welcome compared to COPE. However, DH Discover has great potential because it has a high uh, BIF and a short payload. Weaponized adversary will not only use vulnerable, vulnerable IoT services, they will also use many more. For example, a game engine called the T-Source Engine Query and also app remote desktop. And finally, the amplification attack is on one only one of the many types of IoT attack. There are many more. We will give some examples. The first is uh, attacker may use a password brute force attack. Here are some combinations of users and the password captured by our honeypots. Uh, for example, router admin, router entity world, uh, router def default. The uh, many routers are using um, Oh, sorry, root, root admin, root empty um, or root default. Many routers are using a uh, root admin as they are default login credentials. All the attackers can simply use exploit, for example, from exploit DB and they find the vulnerable uh, devices and then launch attack. Uh, in the DNS hijack and the phishing demo on the right, uh, this picture shows a demo. We have a DNS hijack exploit, for example, and we bought a router online, which is a, we know is vulnerable to the exploit, and then we connect to it, just like attacker find it from internet. Um, and then we use the exploit to hack into the router and then change its DNS name server. So when a victim connected to the router and browse a website, Look at the red text here. It's added by us. It's a it's fake. It shows the website is a fake. So um, which means uh, after after the user uh, browse the website and input its username or password or card number whatever, and uh, click the uh, sub submit button, then the attacker gets them. So the phishing is successful. We do have a live video, but uh, um, it's in Chinese, so um, I will just uh, say I will just uh, say detail. 
Here's another example. We have studied the UPNP and the SOAP protocol family for more than two years. And we have demonstrated their exposure vulnerabilities and the related threats in our annual IoT security report. More than 2 million of IoT devices worldwide has the UPNP SSDP service published publicly accessible and the SSDP were vulnerable to DDoS attack. How UPNP is abused is very similar to the other um, protocols we mentioned before. So I'm not talking about the details. What I really wanted to talk about is that the UPNP port ma mapping service exposed on about uh, 390,000 IoT devices is like likely to be misused as a proxy or vendor intranet service accessible on the extranet. Just imagine someone create a net mapping uh, in your router and use its vulnerability and then visit your inter internal network from internet. Uh, here is the example, you cannot access the internet uh, service because the router does not allow you to do that. But uh, we can use the exploit, UPnP exploit to apply it, uh, create a network mapping um, from port 1234. And then we can access the internal service um, um, from port 1234. And actually it's not a made up. Uh, we, we did a full scale of the UPnP services uh, from all over the internet. And we found that many of them are already being compromised. Here is a map, uh, there's a mapping uh, name, container stream, internal silence, uh, intro scan, et cetera, which shows that the attacker are already ahead of us. With this established mapping, the attacker can either hack your smart lock, lock camera, or even your gas detector, or the hack into your laptop. Finally, stay persistent in your uh, company's uh, network. It's a, it's a threat to your personal security and safety. It's also a threat to your company. You may wonder why mitigating uh, IoT attacks is so hard because IoT ecosystem is complicated and there are many players. Governments lack IoT related mandatory uh, standard or law enforcement. California has already passed its Internet of Things security bill, but it's uh, still in the early stage for many governments. Vendors and developers have weak concern for security. They are unwilling to spend $1 for um, security design or mechanism for each device because for them, any security cost is still cost. So the products are poorly designed and there are no security patches or updates. Security service provider often find it's hard to work with IoT vendors because they, are, uh, they have weak concern for security. Still, there are too many types of IoT devices and protocols to secure. And the vendors uh, and the users and the enterprise lack the best practice of how to configure and manage IoT devices of their own. So here is some suggestion for IoT vendors. First and foremost, hire security professionals. I can take a friend of mine, for example. Uh, he, is a, he is a security leader of a very famous uh, video surveillance company. Their early stage products use a default weak password. So attacker could easily log in and with, a, uh, with a default password and watch any video channel they want to watch. He just made a small improvement. The first time the user logging uh, to the system, he, he must change the default password. So <clears throat> it's a small change in user experience, but a huge step forward in security. And also during the uh, design phase, do not enable uh, discovery functionality if unnecessary. If the request is a multicast, then it's okay to reply. Or if the request is a unicast and the request source is in the sub, same subnet, uh, also it's okay to reply. In any other cases, do not reply. Do not reply. It's do not reply. It's very important to, for me to repeat three times because it's really, really important. Uh, for enterprise CISOs, mm -hmm. what, you, what should you do? 
Next week, you should uh, identify managed and unmanaged IoT devices uh, within your organizations, all of them, because knowing is the most important. And uh, in the first three months, you should follow uh, the presentation, what you should know. Uh, you should build a manual workflow, three, three steps. First, uh, check configurations and de deployment of IoT devices to make sure they are not exposed to the internet extent extently. Turn off discovery, uh, uh, turn off discovery service if unnecessary and use firewalls and whitelist. Second, change default password and keep device firmware up to date. Three, use threat intelligence service, um, for example, Shadow or NTI, to monitor exposed asset continuously. So hygiene is very important, but these are manual operations and they de de depend on experts. Uh, which is neither consistent nor sustainable. So within six months, you should build a automatic and a systematic way, um, including uh, four steps. First, uh, build a loop, identify, evaluate, and eliminate IoT security operation workflow and uh, its tools and system. Second, Increase IoT security to your uh, unified endpoint security managed solution. Uh, any IoT devices, your cameras, uh, your printers should be treated the same as your laptop or your server. Third, build a zero trust strategy to align with work from home of your IoT. Remember the work, uh, attack path from the internet to the home router and to the laptop, and finally to the enterprise network, uh, just as we mentioned before, the real problem is that there's too much trust of the endpoint. So we need to place a zero trust enforcer, uh, both in front of the home router and in front of all the enterprise services. Unless the client's, client's uh, credential is approved, it cannot access to the router or to the service or any to any other services behind them. And the last one is uh, consider a cloud DDoS mitigation services, uh, which cover IoT threat protection. If you do not have an on-premise uh, DDoS, anti-DDoS uh, device. Finally, I'd like to thank NS Focus School Lab and all of my um, colleagues, uh, including Zhang Xing, Sang Hongqing, Wei Pei Ru, Zhou Hongyi, and Zhang Haoran for all their excellent work. And we, we have also some um, academic cooperation with many excellent prof professors. Professor Huang in particular, we have published a great paper based on our IoT threat capture system. Um, if you have any question uh, or you are interested in detail of the presentation, Please feel free to download some resources from the link or Unfocus Global website. Thank you.